What is going on everybody? Welcome back to Chud's Barbecue. My name is Bradley Robinson and today I'm going to show you how I made these. Beautiful, delicious, smoky, deep fried, gooey, amazing, grilled and deep fried scotch eggs. Coming up. This is some meat. Ooh, pat it dry. And what I got here is a big chunk of pork butt, nice and thick. It is boneless. This would make for a pretty ridiculous pork steak. But as you can see, it's got a lot of fat content to it, so it should make for a really good sausage. That's because today we're taking a stab at the good old scotch egg. And I haven't made a scotch egg in a very long time, and I'm a little bit nervous because there's a lot that can go wrong. But essentially, it's a soft boiled egg wrapped in sausage and then deep fried or tossed on the grill. And you can use whatever kind of sausage you like. Traditionally, a lot of people will just grab some breakfast sausage or maybe an Italian sausage. Sausage. I think the original UK version is a mixture of a breakfast sausage and some blood pudding. But today I'm gonna to make a pretty standard sausage that is approaching breakfast sausage, but not quite, a little more savory. But to start out, we're gonna start the way we always do, which is cubing this up so it fits into our meat grinder. Big old fat cap on there. This is just gonna help the meat grinder not have to work so hard. And I'm making a pork sausage, but like I said, you can pretty much do whatever you want. You know, a beef sausage would be pretty cool. A chorizo scotch egg, <laughs> yes please. And while it's nicely cubed up, I'm gonna weigh all this out so I know exactly how to calculate my spice mixture for these. And if you want to learn how I calculate spice mixtures, you can check out my video all about the five techniques on how to make sausage. But now I'm going to pop this into the freezer for a little bit to get nice and cold. Next up, let's go ahead and get all of our spices together for the sausage. Starting, we're going into this bowl with some kosher salt, some granulated garlic, some dry mustard, some onion powder, black pepper, ground thyme, some mace, paprika, and a little bit of cayenne. And just get that all nice and mixed up. And now that the meat is nice and cold, through the grinder we go. And we're going through the coarse dye today. Beautiful. And today I'm actually going to send it through twice, just to help kind of work the meat. And also that's a pretty coarse grind. And sending it through twice will give it a really good consistency. And just like that, all of our meat is nicely ground up. And of course you could just send it through the small dye once, but with a really fatty cut like this, I feel like it helps disperse all the fat and it mixes it for us somewhat, so it doesn't take nearly as long to get it nice and tacky. But next up, we're gonna go in with all of our spices. Again, not any specific flavor profile here, just kind of savory right down the middle of the road. A Little bit of kick, some nice garlic flavors, and that mace is in there just to kind of give it that classic kind of German flavor profile. And it's smelling really good already. Next up, we're gonna go in with our water. That's just gonna help this all come together, hydrate it a little bit, and make sure it's nice and tacky. We're gonna mix this for a good couple minutes until everything comes together nicely. No need for a binder on this sausage because we're not casing it so it's not gonna be nice and plump but this water is gonna make it so it spreads out a little bit easier. It makes it easier to wrap our eggs. And just like that looking nice and cohesive and nice and tacky so now I'm gonna pop this into the fridge while we start talking about our eggs. So in this pot I've got some water and we're gonna bring that up to a boil. And once brought up to a boil, lower the heat a little bit to a gentle simmer. And then we're gonna carefully drop in our eggs and we're gonna set a timer for about five minutes. I'm gonna do a bunch of these because I'm sure that I'm gonna break some in the peeling process. So let these simmer away for the next five minutes. And while they cook, I'm gonna get an ice bath ready. And after five minutes, these are coming out and I'm really surprised none of them cracked, but that's another reason you wanna lower them in very gently. And also why you don't wanna cook at a rolling boil because at a rolling boil, these will bounce around and they could crack but out these come and directly into an ice bath to cool down and we're gonna let them sit in there for probably 10 minutes to make sure they are completely cold and chilled all the way through. Beautiful. And now that these have cooled down for a bit, I'm gonna take them inside and peel them under a running tap and uh, I'll let you know my fatality rate on these. All right, after peeling all these, I had a decent ratio out of the 12 that I boiled. I've got eight that are still intact. And the other four, I either split in half accidentally because these are incredibly soft or the peel stuck and I ripped them and I ate a few of them and I gave one to the dog. So definitely gotta be careful because these are very squishy, very soft. And the reason you want to do a five minute egg as opposed to a six or seven minute egg like you're usually going to see is because once you wrap these in sausage, we're going to deep fry some, we're going to throw some on the chud box. And it's going to take about five, six minutes for those to cook and get crispy, which means the inside will probably cook even more. So in order to get that gooey yolk that we're after, we want to cook these just enough to set the outside. Although I have my doubts about the one on the chud box coming out gooey, but we'll cross that bridge when we get there. But for now, let's wrap these up in sausage, which seems like it's going to be kind of a tedious process. But I'm going to start out by grabbing a decent 
sized ball of some of this sausage, maybe about two, three ounces. And we're gonna just try this by hand at first, but if this doesn't work out, I may have to bust out some parchment paper or some cling film or something like that. But I'm just gonna try and make this as flat as possible in my little hand here. And then we're gonna grab one of our eggs carefully, pop it right there, and we're gonna start wrapping this thing up. Okay, be gentle now, buddy. And again, you know the drill here. We're just wrapping an egg in sausage, trying to make it as pretty as possible. And not too thick, because we don't have too much sausage that takes a long time to cook. So I'm kind of gonna make a football here and pinch off any extra off the ends, just like that. Yeah, this is working out. Take off some of that extra and give it some nice shaping, being very gentle. I think that's the biggest problem a lot of people have with scotch eggs across the board is they use too much sausage. So by the time it comes out of the fryer, it's not fully cooked but we'll see if that's the right size. So I'm gonna repeat this process several more times. Looking pretty good though. For this next batch, I grabbed a little cup of water here so things don't stick nearly as bad, especially now that my gloves are dirty. Oh yeah, that's working great. And this method appears to be working just fine. Oh God, it's sticking. Such a delicate little egg. Beep. The wet hand really helps for sealing these seams together. You can kind of smear it a little bit easier. And judging by the amount of sausage I've used on these eggs so far, I definitely made way too much, but that's fine. I can case it up if I want. Beautiful on number four here. And if you look in there, I definitely broke that egg. The yolk is still intact, but the whites came apart. So if I cut into this one first, <laughs> we'll know. And just like that, all wrapped up. This is the broken one, so I can keep an eye on it. But I think these are looking pretty good. Decent size to them. But I'm going to put these in the fridge for about 20 minutes just to let that sausage firm up. Up a little bit. And while we wait, let's go ahead and bust out a quick dipping sauce. Starting by going into this jar with one egg and one egg yolk. Also gonna throw in clove of garlic, a nice big fat pinch of salt, and a little bit of Dijon. Boop. And bust out the old immersion blender and get that all mixed up. And now I'm gonna start streaming in some avocado oil and you could pour it all in and then go in with the immersion blender, but I've had that method not work out before. So I'm gonna just kind of do it the old fashioned way in a small stream. And just like that, we've got ourselves some mayonnaise, but we're not just making mayonnaise, we're making a Dijon mayonnaise with some other things. So I'm gonna go in with some more Dijon. Beep. Also going in with a splash of some Worcestershire sauce and some white wine vinegar and get that nice and mixed up. <laughs> And that is looking beautiful. Give that a little taste. Oh, that is lovely. Nice and bright. Got that Dijon flavor going strong. Beautiful. But feel free to adjust as you see fit. Ooh, yeah. This stuff is really tasty, folks. Now, traditionally, these are now fried in some hot oil with panko on the outside, which we're definitely gonna do. But I also wanna see how they come out on the chud box. So, first things first, I'm gonna bust out some good old fashioned chud rub, the tried and true. Then I'm gonna take a couple of these and just get them nicely coated because that sounds good to me. Get a little extra black pepper and seasoning on the outside. But of course, you could throw these on as is. Is. You could throw them on with nothing on it and then glaze them with a sauce, but I'm thinking just a nice little dry rub on the outside is gonna do the trick. And we'll do one more. Beautiful. Let's go ahead and fire up the pit. So I got this pit fired up to about 300, 325, and I'm gonna pop these on. And again, I have no idea if this is actually gonna work. Ooh, a little sizzle. Because we gotta get that sausage cooked without overcooking the eggs. And I don't know if that's even possible, but we're gonna see how it goes. So that's why I'm rocking pretty hot. Looks like it's at 350 on this side. And we're gonna check back in in a little bit, probably flip them over. All right, it's been about 30 minutes, maybe 20, and uh, we had our first blowout, which is a very terrible smell. But other than that, these are looking pretty good. So I think I'm gonna pull these off and just hope that the sausage is fully cooked because I don't wanna probe it because there's a yolk in there. So we'll see. Yolk's on you. Do you have faith? Always have faith. No fear, all faith. All right, now it's time to dredge these up. For a traditional scotch egg, we got some all-purpose flour, egg wash, and some panko breadcrumbs, and I think you know the drill. First, we go into the flour. I gotta be real careful, because that one that I popped when we were rolling is just oozing yolk. I'm not sure if you can see that in there, but we're not gonna be using that one. From flour, we go into the egg wash, and from the egg wash, into the panko. And there we go. And now, we repeat. Evan, you wanna do one? Evan, welcome back to the backyard. It's been a while. Yeah, see, sí, gracias. Uh, very happy to be here. We're going to complete Completely coat them in flour. Don't forget the sides, rookie move. Everybody knows about that. We're gonna keep one wet hand, one dry hand. Boom, this is the wet hand. Just let it drip, let it drip. Dry hand. 
How many eggs would you guess I've used so far today? I'm gonna go ahead and say a dozen. A uh, hot dozen, a dozen, a dozen eggs. 22. 22, okay, I was off by about half, so <laughs> thank you. I broke four in the peeling process. Okay. And then I used like five right there, and then I made a Dijonese, which used two. Oh, Dijonese! <laughs> I didn't think about the Dijonese. Dijonese, criminally underrated barbecue sauce there, Dijonese. It's very good. I was also pleasantly shocked about how good it came out. Those look good. And now into the oil we go. Should I drop it in or lower it in? I think I'm gonna lower it in. But we got this temp right around 350 degrees. And we're just gonna cook these for about five minutes just to cook that sausage through, get these nice and golden brown, and hopefully not overcook the yolks. And after about five, six minutes out, these come looking a little darker than I was expecting, but they still look really nice. So I'm gonna let these rest down for a little bit and then we're gonna dive on in. All right, y'all, this is rested down for a little bit. So let's go ahead and slice on in and see how we did. Is it runny? Is the sausage cooked? Oh. Yeah, I'd say that's a good looking uh, scotch egg right there. You okay over there, buddy? <laughs> Nice runny yolk. I know everyone's not a fan of runny yolks. We'll, we'll get to that later, but sausage looks perfectly cooked. Nice runny yolks in there. You got the little molten bit that didn't run out that's staying in there, and uh, I think it's time to dive on in. But first, we gotta check on that smoked one. Now, I have a little less faith in this one because I've never seen anyone throw a scotch egg on a grill before, but looks great, so let's see the inside. Ooh, sausage is cooked through. A little less runny, a little more jammy, but still running. Love it. And there it is, folks. A nice grilled and deep fried version of the lovely scotch egg with some homemade Dijonese. And uh, I'm getting hungry. Evan, would you like to come try a scotch egg? Yes, I would. <laughs> would you like to start with the classic fried or the chud box grilled? You know, I really think I have to try the classic fried. I'm right there with you. Like, it, it just looks so good. That is a good looking scotch egg, nice and crispy. I mean, you saw it, I was pretty nerve wracked about cooking these because trying to cook that sausage through without overcooking the outside and making sure the inside is nice and gooey is a daunting task, but. That's, that's the thing with a scotch egg. Mm -hmm. You have to keep it nice and gooey and jammy inside and you have to cook the sausage. And you did it. Also, it's a perfect little dipper. It's such a good little dipper. All right, let's see how they go. Blink. I'm gonna dip. Oh, that is good. Mmm, little drip there. Mmm, little dip drip. Almost got it right in your shoes. Holy wow. That is phenomenal. Sausage, breadcrumbs. Oh my and God. And that gooey yolk in there. Oh my God. I gotta try what's this some of is, that sauce. This is, this is just another level. Mmm. Mm, so crunchy. The sausage is nice and juicy and fatty. That the sausage, the crispiness. The egg just comes in and like levels everything out with richness. Mm -hmm. It is so good. The Dijonese and the egg whites kind of gives me a deviled egg vibe. A little bit, a little bit. But then you got the sausage and the crunch. That is very good. Wow. I haven't made a scotch egg in a long time, and yeah, it's been a while. This is definitely something I'm gonna be making more often. Holy hell! Okay, well, yeah, just kind of going for the smoked one now. But also, like the bind, like there's no oh. gap really between the egg and the sausage. That's the kind of yolk I think most people are after, where it's not dripping, but it's not hard cooked. Complete adherence. All right. This is a very well cooked scotch oh, I can egg. Smell it. You get that chud box direct <laughs> flavor. I think seen. I'm going to take a bite of this one and then I'm going to dip the other side of the Dijonese. Oh, we can double dip. It's all good. I've never seen anyone grill a scotch egg before. I mean, I didn't look it up, so don't quote me on that. But uh, if it wasn't so labor intensive, this would be a pretty good appetizer for a barbecue restaurant, football party, something okay, like before that. Okay, before you dip that, before you taste that, mm -hmm. the fried one was really good. This one is awesome. Yeah. This one is really goddamn good. I definitely prefer the smoked one. Wow. Mm. Whoa, right? Mm -hmm. Wow, that's crazy. It's got that smoked sausage vibe to it. No, yeah. Obviously. But, but well, like within it, it has the egg. Mm. The same thing when we're trying to put a bunch of different stuff inside of a sausage, it has the same thing. It seems more flavorful too. It's so good. Probably because to put chud rub on it, but. <sighs> It really did pick up a lot of that charcoal flavor too. Boop, boop, boop. Ow. Now, the real question is, do you think you can take one of these down in one bite? Nope. Everybody knows the rules. All right. Oh. <laughs> Penelope probably could. I think the non-grilled version, I probably could. Yeah, these ones are a little- I'm not gonna do that on camera, that's grotesque, but. <laughs> <laughs> the grilled one's a lot better than I thought it would be. That's just really, really, really dang good. You know what, I'm gonna have to uh, cut another one of these. Hold on, let me get that on camera. Okay, sorry, sorry, sorry. Ooh. Yep, that's a good looking scotch egg. That's some goo. Oh, just a little dip. 
I am reminded today of how much I love Dijonese, man. <laughs> wow! You know, a lot of chefs say that how you cook eggs mm -hmm. is like how good you are of a chef, right? It's, it's, it's like almost the benchmark. It's almost a yardstick of like how well you can do, right? Of how many things you can do as a chef because you can take an egg, the most simple thing, and then you can transform it into a bunch of different things. And here you have cooked, how many? Was it 22? 22 <laughs> different eggs, right? They were like differently like deep fried or made into the Dijonese or like into the batter. Definitely an like egg heavy video for sure. So many different eggs went into this thing right here and it's worth it. Yeah, it's absolutely. It's so worth it. Absolutely worth it. I should have put eggs into the sausage. Mmm. <laughs> oh my god. I could eat a lot of these, and uh, I think I'm going to. Yeah, if you have a dozen more, I'll take it. Mm-hmm. Okay. This is what it would look like if you uh, overcooked your yolks slightly, but still pretty jammy. Mm-hmm. You know what would be really cool is if you overcooked them and then took the yolks out and then made a little deviled egg out of them. Ooh. A little scotch egg out of them. That one's a little... Oh my god. That is perfect. That's the best one. <laughs> Beep, beep, beep. On the grill, yolk stays nice and runny. That's like the cleanest cut. That's like, oh my god, that's perfect. We should devil one of these. Yeah. All right, well, uh, I think we're going to knock out the rest of these pretty quick, but I'll catch up with y'all in a minute. And with this very last bite of Scotch egg, I think it's time for the official taste test. <laughs> Alright y'all, and that is it. That is how to make some scotch eggs both in the deep fryer and on the barbecue pit and I highly recommend giving this one a try. Even more so than I usually do because this one was truly fantastic. And full transparency, I was only planning on making the traditional scotch eggs but because I'm a barbecue channel I figured I had to grill off a few but I'm pretty sure I like those even more and you should definitely give them a try and I'll certainly be making them again very soon. But all that being said, if you enjoyed this video let me know by hitting that subscribe button. Let YouTube know by dropping a like on this video. If you give this recipe a try, for yourself be sure to tag me on instagram at chud's barbecue i love to see what y'all are cooking big shout out to all the patreon members thank you for supporting team chud and allowing me to keep making all these videos and until the next time i see you please go cook something outside peace